Oh, yeah. at this pro oh, yeah. rally are chanting that Spain will never be divided. Spain is on the brink. Madrid has reasserted full power over the once autonomous region of Catalonia and is charging its independence leaders with rebellion, which could mean up to 30 years in prison. The unprecedented events have sent shockwaves through the region, where tens of thousands of Catalans on both sides have been taken to the streets for months. We came here to learn why Catalans are fighting, either to remain part of Spain or to break away. I'm in Barcelona, the capital of Catalonia, where the push for independence from Spain has drawn tens of thousands of people to the streets and divided friends and neighbors. The battle over Catalonia dates back to 1714, when the region was defeated in war by what is now Spain. It became one of 17 autonomous communities in the decentralized country, with its own president, parliament, and police force. But for decades, there's been resentment building over Madrid's interference in the region. And in 2008, as Spain fell into a deep economic crisis, the modern movement for independence gained momentum. This fall, Catalonia's parliament announced it would hold a binding referendum on whether to leave Spain. Madrid said such a vote was illegal and in violation of the Spanish constitution. And on referendum day, Spain sent its militarized police to shut voting down, sparking outrage. On the day we arrived in Barcelona, anti-fascists were protesting the crackdown. This protest by the Antifa has now been met by a police line who are blocking them from going any further. They're out here protesting the police violence that we saw on the day of the referendum. The crowd was also anti-media. So we spoke to student members of the Catalan National Assembly, a pro-independent civic organization that was one of the driving forces behind the referendum. How did you guys feel on the day of the referendum, October 1st, when you saw the Spanish police and government respond with such brutal force? It was like a shock, and then there were emotions of anger, of impotence, of not understanding why a movement that has been pacific since the beginning has been pacific, is trying to repress it with such violence and so unmeasured, with people who were injured. La represión lo único que está haciendo es esto, que haya más eh, movilizaciones y la gente tenga más razones para defender su derecho a decidir como nación. In the end, voter turnout was around 43%. But of the 2.3 million people who voted, almost 90% chose to leave Spain. Recently sacked Catalan president, Carles Puigdemont, said the results meant the region had won the right to independence. No son ellos. That sent thousands of Catalans to the streets to protest against secession. They're chanting things here like Spain will never be divided, that they are Spanish, Catalonia is part of Spain, and that they also want the Catalan president push them on in prison. Todo el pueblo, la mayoría del pueblo, ha dicho basta. Estamos aquí para decir basta. Se terminó. Queremos, queremos, no queremos la independencia. Queremos la unión por completo de todo el pueblo. Madrid's forceful response has conjured for some memories of Spain's recent fascist past under military dictator Francisco Franco, who ruled from 1939 until his death in 1975. And it's drawn people from far ends of the political spectrum to the streets. A member of a far-right group told us she supported the police response and thought Madrid hadn't gone far enough. We've seen how, for years, the state has done absolutely nothing. It's left that the secessionism camp at its own, that it takes cartas so important as education, that it has its own force police, and the government has done absolutely nothing. And it has had to be separated so that the government starts to make certain declarations. Throughout Barcelona, people display political leanings with flags hung off balconies. Here, Catalan flags are more common than Spanish ones. Since the lead-up to the referendum, they've also hung flags that say yes to independence.
Catalans have their own language and unique traditions, like these castells, or human towers. Under Franco, these practices were suppressed. So this is a major symbol of Catalan identity, and it represents everyone in society coming together and building together. It's quite incredible to witness, and as you can tell, it's a major tourist attraction here. Catalonia was granted official autonomy in 1932, but that was revoked in 1939 by Franco when he seized power. It was restored several years after his death, when Spain transitioned to democracy. Carlos Castellanos was jailed several times for resisting Franco and fighting for independence. His grandson, Roger, has inherited the cause. In Barcelona. In Barcelona. Uh, for demanding my, my um, liberation when I was in jail. They live in Girona, a tourist destination that's a cradle of the separatist movement. It's also the birthplace of Puigdemont, who was the mayor before he was Catalonia's president. Why is the issue of Catalonia one of injustice for you? For uh, many reasons, not for reasons, diem, sobre tot de de, de representativitat política, de fet. Uh, La manera de fer de, de Catalunya no, no, no té massa res a veure amb la, amb la, amb la ideologia dominant a eh, l'estat espanyol. Durant els deu darrers anys hi ha hagut potser una dotzena de, o més de, de, de lleis del Parlament de Catalunya dedicades a la justícia social i, i a la igualtat, com la llei de, contra l'homofòbia, les lleis, lleis d'igualtat entre homes i dones, lleis a favor dels, refu dels refugiats, l'acollida dels refugiats. Qualsevol tipus de llei que hem volgut avançar cap a la igualtat, o, o també, per exemple, la llei contra la, tauroma, la, la, la pràctica de la tauromàquia, doncs tot això el govern de l'estat espanyol ho ha suprimit. Have either of you ever felt that you are Spanish? <laughs> potser en algun moment d'inconsciència, molt juvenil, potser sí, potser no. El Espanya és un, és un it's empire. Uh, la nació espanyola uh, es fonamenta en la imposició de la nació castellana i de la cultura castellana a les altres nacions de la península. No pot haver-hi un sentiment nacional un espanyol unitari, perquè la, la, la nació espanyola està construïda a base d'imposició. Flowers commemorating the violent police crackdown on Referendum Day hang at the school where we met, which was a polling station. El que és important per entendre la situació actual és conèixer una mica quina és la, la, la ideologia de les, dels sectors dominants de, de l'estat espanyol. La ideologia de, dels, sectors, dels sectors dominants de l'estat espanyol és una ideologia militar eh, agressiva. Eh? O sigui, neix de l'aristocràcia la castellana militar. On October 27th, Catalonia officially declared independence from Spain. Soon after, Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy announced that under Article 155 of the Spanish Constitution, Madrid was dissolving Catalonia's government and calling a snap election. <laughs> Members of the Socialists' Party of Catalonia had walked out of Parliament in protest before the vote for independence. We spoke to Organization Secretary Salvador de la Roca before the dramatic turn of events. He told us independence leaders had no right to defy the law. Should the Spanish government implement Article 155 of the Constitution? If uh, Mr. Puigdemont uh, doesn't declare, doesn't accept the rule of law, some step must be taken by the Spanish government to restore the rule of law in Catalonia. We should be clear of that. Without the rule of law, there is no democracy possible. Explain to me why you are against independence. Independence is bad for Catalan people because it divides uh, Catalan people in two halves and we want to unify, reunify the Catalan population, the Catalan people. It's bad because uh, it takes us out of Europe and we want to be part of Europe. And it's bad because from an economical point of view, it's uh, a very bad uh, business for the Catalan economy. As we have seen these last days, with more than 500 companies leaving Catalonia. It's very clear to me from talking to people over the past week that Catalans are divided. What do you think the best way forward is to heal those divisions and to mend them? To try a new agreement between 
Catalan people and the rest of Spain. We think that this can be a change through a, a reformation of the Spanish constitution and we think this can uh, attain a consensus of let's say 70-80% of the Catalan population. This is the most important problem we have nowadays in Catalonia, the division in the society. To find out what it feels like to be friends on either side of the polarizing issue of independence, we visited the home of Ernesto Lopez. Ernesto and his friend Carlos have been friends since they were three. Carlos is for independence and Ernesto is against it. I'm against independence because I think the logical order of humanity is advancing to bigger and more inclusive political communities, not smaller. Okay, and my nationality, I think it's Catalan because I've always been educated in Catalan. My language is Catalan. My costumes and my traditions are Catalan and are different from Spanish. I love Spain, I love Spanish people, but I don't think that, Spain's, that Spain belongs to me. With globalizations, little states, I'm not talking about Catalonia, I'm talking like Spain, little states like Spain are going to disappear, are going to be totally irrelevant. A European federation is the only answer to the modern times we're living in, because we have um, big countries like the US, like Russia, like China, okay, and but countries with, with of Europe cannot compete with them. Yeah. We have to be together if we want to compete with them. So is there anyone in your life that you completely disagree with or you're not talking to anymore? No, no, no one at all. Well, indeed, my, my girlfriend is, is Spanish and she defends the, the unity of Spain and we're still together, we have a great relationship and we'll have our, our different opinions, but we respect each other and we love each other. That's the most important thing in the end, I think, and with love and respect, I think we can get along um, very well. And the same for Catalonia and for Spain. At least two other regions in Spain with separatist leanings are keeping close watch on what's happening in Catalonia. Galicia, on the border with Portugal, and the Basque Country, on the border with France, which is also one of Spain's wealthiest regions. Outside Spain, Catalonia has support among other movements for local rule, including Scotland, the Flanders region of Belgium, and two of Italy's wealthiest northern regions, which also recently voted in favor of greater autonomy in a non-binding referendum. Meanwhile, no other countries have said they would recognize Catalonia's statehood. The EU and the US have expressed their support for Spain. What's clear is that what happens next will determine the future of generations to come. Hey guys, it's Dina, and as you just saw, the issue of Catalan independence is pretty divisive. In Spain, soccer is also polarizing and political. In the next video, I'll show you how Spain's top two teams, FC Barcelona and Real Madrid, are an example of that.